third grant is a DWI control grant. Uh, as you know, impaired driving is still a huge problem in the state of New Hampshire, specifically in the town of Littleton. Uh, and this enhances our, uh, our patrol coverage specific to drive, those driving while intoxicated or under the influence of drugs with the fentanyl heroin epidemic and uh, uh, prescription drug epidemic. Uh, certainly we need these extra funds to do saturation DWI patrols. So I'm asking that you uh, approve uh, the grant for six, accept the grant for $6,961.50. Second. All those in favor indicate in the affirmative. Aye. Aye. Thank you. And then the last grant, um, the highway safety also provides grant monies. Uh, in some cases, uh, they pay up to 50% of the total cost of replacement equipment. Uh, we're replacing our in-cruiser video systems so that they'll, they're more up to date and they uh, will uh, download their video automatically to our server, which eliminates uh, a lot of error in using mechanical devices to do that where you can lose data. Um, so that's a 50% uh, in-kind match. So um, I'm asking that the board accept the highway safety grant for the in-cruiser video grant, $3,210. So all cruisers now have video? All the cruisers except for mine. Except for it has to be the way the grants are written, that's a good question, and they have to be for primary control. And do all officers have body cameras? All officers have body cameras. I mean, okay. So I second, all those in favor indicate in the affirmative. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, oh, don't move. Second item on the agenda <coughs> is a proposal to make some modifications to the traffic ordinance. Okay. So we're, we're, gonna, we're going to take that up next month. At, at the next meeting um, because we're going to do it as a, I think you don't have to update it one. Um, oh, yeah. I guess not. Yeah. Okay. It, it requires so, a uh, public hearing okay. notice to get Oh, that's what the announcement's for on the, on the attachment. Right. Okay. Got it. Thank you. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and Carrie, you're, you're next. Okay. <laughs> Um, last spring, uh, Jeff, Jeff Zawecki, he's the Economic and Community Field Support Officer or Community Director for the UNH Corporate Extension Program um, with Grafton County. And he approached us um, at the Chamber and asked us to be the first pilot ever of a New Hampshire First Impressions Program. And out of 234 towns, um, the extension shows Littleton and Rochester to be paired up. And we know that the first impression in a town can be very powerful, um, very telling. Um, do you want to share a little bit more on the background of that, Jeff? Yeah, it stems from a $10,000 grant from the North East Center for Rural Development, which is housed out of the University of Pennsylvania extension. Um, and they offer funding to extensions um, across uh, the New England area or the Northeast um, to do train the trainer programs. This is a national wide program um, that's been done in a number of states, and this is our attempt to bring it here. Um, we, we received an innovation award and actually presented this program uh, to a national extension audience this summer. Um, so, because we're actually using mobile technology, so it's a really interesting way to refresh. Um, first impression, secret shopper type program. So this summer, there was a group of us from Littleton, uh, total 15, the core group is 13. We went down to Rochester and looked at the good, bad, and the ugly, and they also came up here and looked at what we call assets and opportunities. And and I do have handouts for, actually four of you there. And it lists the folks that were involved in the Littleton uh, program. This Wednesday, we were going to Rochester to share the assets and opportunities. But it also in included the press releases from the Caledonian Record, the Courier, and the one from Rochester. And the excitement that they have with us reaching out and helping, helping them. Even though the population, 6,000 for Littleton, about 30,000, for Rochester, they, they have a river district. They also have, well, have similar Main Street programs 
uh, or similar Main Street. So that's, um, I'm assuming that's the biggest reason why we got paired up. But in this meeting, it's going to be November 1st, it's basically a, a personal invita invitation from us that participated in the New Hampshire First Impressions. For, for you to be involved with that, it's going to be November 1st. The doors will open up at 5.30. We have the Opera House. But the Rochester group will be sharing with us the assets. And I just wanted to highlight a little bit of the assets that they um, shared with us. I, I won't get into the opportunities because we will break out that night into different groups of things that we can work on. But some of the first impression key findings are we have an absolutely charming Main Street. Uh, the visiting team was blown away by Littleton's charm. And among the words that they used were charming, quaint, welcoming, walkable, bright, inviting, and warm. Um, obviously, historic beauty. Uh, Isaiah Littleton's historic buildings and character stood out to the visiting team. One, um, one member called it a quintessential uh, New England town. And then the diverse business community was another tremendous asset. Uh, the diversity of shopping opportunities along Main Street kept the visiting busy. Uh, visitors busy. They noted the wide variety of unique shops and antiques. This was more specific to downtown though versus uh, town-wide business life. And then the other thing that they, uh, some very impressive key findings were the artsy and folksy streets, uh, the overall charm of, of Littleton. Those are all the, the positive assets. They did find some opportunities which they will present to us November 1st. And then we will break out into teams to start to begin uh, the work on those. And Jeff and his team have offered to stay in close contact with us, if we need them, until December of 2017. Mm -hmm. So if we need extra help with that. Uh, so this is more not an ask, really, other than just a personal invitation to um, be there that night to hear what they have uh, for us. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Energy Conservation Committee is the next item on the agenda. Yep. Peter Cooper. other 22 other 
uh, websites that, could, that users could find additional uh, energy-related information. Um, so if I could uh, turn the talk over to Bill, he, he would has to he would lead on the um, uh, on the uh, audit and, and our recommendations for the opera house. Bill. Thank you. Uh, Bill, Bill Chandra, one of the uh, Wolf Energy uh, Conservation Committee members. Uh, I worked with uh, Jamie Myers uh, Incorporated. We went through and did all the tests. tests. Um, as you have had the opportunity to look at the reports. Uh, going through, we uh, sat with the Opera House Commission to see what was feasible um, and looked like uh, doable projects. Um, the, when you break the projects down individually, some of them are expensive um, for the amount of savings you have, but because of the uh, building and the construction in its entirety, what we would like to do is go for, um, do a warrant article for all the projects, um, except for the ceiling at the second level um, and, and the installation in there. And the reason for it is because um, for approximately $32,000, the payback would be to under five years for the town. Um, <coughs> if the project broken off individually, some of those paybacks are upwards of 17 years. Um, so it would be very cost effective for the town and, and it's mm -hmm. indefinite as far as the savings. One of the barriers that we had uh, from the historic commission was that the spray foam insulation, they did not want that touching any of the original building. And we, uh, talking with uh, Jimmy Myers again, there are different uh, mediums that can be used to spray against so that if for some reason they wanted to pull all that material out, that could be accomplished at a later date for renovation purposes or otherwise. So I have a question. When, you, when this was presented to us some months ago, <clears throat> the Opera House total cost uh, with a five-year payback was $41,075 a week. So what you're saying now is that they may use different material yes. and it comes to around 35000 instead of the Yes, 41. instead of the 41. Okay. yes. And it still would have about a five-year pay. Well, about a yeah, I guess yes. <coughs> So one of the measures in, that we uh, discussed with this at that uh, meeting was doing that second level right now. That actually has a very good payback because there's no insulation at all, uh, and it's, therefore there's a, 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 a big benefit. Uh, on the other hand, it, it would make uh, it would be more reasonable, of course, if we had a, had a user or a tenant that was actually going to move into that space to do it at that time. But if there, you know, there is money to be saved immediately uh, by doing it, uh, uh, you know, as an initial project. So that's what we would recommend. Um, so is this what you're going to put the Warren article around? Right. Yes. Other things were like interior uh, air sealing uh, and um, additional insulation on uh, work and so on. There was a few other items, but that that was uh, the major item. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. The, um, oh. We have a we have a, a list of uh, recommendations and uh, um, uh, priorities. Uh, you may have seen the longer version of our energy management plan interviews. This is just the uh, highlights uh, the, that we, we noted. Some of them, we talked about the, the insulation, a major project. Um, but there's also other HVAC issues at the Opera House that we would support as soon as we can get them well defined, uh, which ought to be good uh, paybacks. But, you know, not ready to present that yet, working with the Opera House to identify those. Um, the, the stained glass windows are about to be uh, better weatherized. Again, we haven't figured out how to do that uh, in a historical uh, uh, <coughs> so way. Know, so you are not adequately talking about is these first two items. Then. No, so these are <coughs> things that we're continuing to, these are things oh. that we yet, haven't yet defined, but the, the Applying insulation, um, uh, the subject of that that study, 
uh, is the kind of thing that we, we do know about that we would have a warrant article on. Yeah. So, <coughs> other, um, uh, whether I go, I don't know, I go through these other items. Uh, we, we're still working at, uh, see if we can get an energy audit at the, at the senior center. We know that they, they've got some problems there. The ventilation issues in the kitchen is, is one of those. Um, We heard that they we could work on the windows at the library, um, and uh, at that the report uh, identified a few uh, issues at the fire station, uh, like uh, uh, vents for the uh, dryer and uh, a plumbing stack and so on. But generally speaking, we decided that the payback was not good for insulation at the at the fire station. You had originally a 17-year payback at the fire station. Based on, on the foam insulation proposal that right. originally made. That's right. Would that still be about the same in the time frame? Right. But we're not, because of that long payback, we we're not, gonna, not recommending that okay. portion. Uh, any other items that we should uh, update the <coughs> um, Well, just um, like to give uh, Dan Stearns a, a chance to speak if he wants to on other. Um, concerns at the Opera House. Was, I, know, I know they've got some other things that they're, they're uh, thinking about. Uh, yes, um, good evening. And I'm Dan Stearns, one of the commissioners at the Opera House. And um, we've been meeting and talking about the merit of issues that um, are there, but the one that seems to keep coming up um, in terms of safety is the rigging issue. And I know we, we brought that before the uh, budget committee last year, and I think it was raised this year. And uh, although I wasn't at the, the hearing or the meeting, but um, there was some unfavorable views on uh, addressing that issue. But uh, as a commission, we talked about it. We put it on the back burner, and it is a safety issue. The building is being used uh, increasingly, and we feel that it should be addressed. Um, so um, we're, we're, we're talking about doing. Uh, some type of warrant article um, to uh, address that. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dan, the current fundraising effort that's taking place, is that going to deal with some of these issues? Or? Well, um, we're hopeful, but probably not all of them. And we've been advised that we can uh, use some of the revenues that are coming in from rental to um, meet some improvement needs. And right now, one of them is the kitchen, or we call it a kitchen, but it isn't a full functional kitchen, but it's going to be an area where uh, renters can have uh, access to shelving, possibly a warming oven, uh, uh, refrigeration, uh, so that they can prep the food and get it out even if they have a caterer. And we're looking to use some of the funds that have been um, generated by the rental uh, through the year to apply to that effort. And I think the latest I've heard is it's around $3,500 to $4,000 that we're talking about to address that. And, and the idea behind that is if we have that, that's one of the things that people express that, that they wish they had. If we have that facility, we'll be able to increase rental and fees. So um, that, that should be a, a, a good. So how's the fundraising going? Uh, well, we've, uh, we, we, did a, we did a letter um, and we, we had, a, had a limited response to that. Um, but uh, beyond that, we've had a few events where uh, we've had um, accepted donations, but uh, it's not um, going to cover all the, the needs that uh, are there. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes, we yeah, So, um, I guess um, uh, our recommendation of proceeding with the insulation, insulating uh, Opera House. Uh, I guess we would like to know whether we have your emotional support for that article, and if so, well, we can start generating the words and uh, back backup material that would, would support that article. Certainly, I would support anything that has a decent payback. Sure. Yeah, that, that period of time seems more than acceptable to us in terms of what we're estimating. Okay. Well, we'll get together with the with uh, Andrew and Karen and uh, start generating a, a draft uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, for 2017. Uh, I just would like to sort of
sort of make a comment, and that is um, not that the committee is running out of things to do, um, but town buildings are in a lot better shape than they were three years ago. Um, thanks to the, you know, the support of the taxpayers that have supported you know, virtually every one article that we've come forward. You know, we've got a new heating system for, uh, for the fire department uh, and, the, uh, and the garage. We'll have a brand new garage, which is very energy efficient. Uh, the police station, although it's a few years old, is still a pretty efficient building we've done. Uh, you know, lighting retrofitted virtually every building, um, including the wastewater treatment plant transfer station. Uh, so I think we're significantly better off than we were a few years ago. So again, just like to thank the, the voters for supporting the fire at the beginning of St. Thank you. Well, I have, excuse me, I have a num ton of questions here regarding the very technical, specific comments you've got in here, and I just want some clarification. So who should I call if I want to... Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm a process person. Right. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. I'll get, I'll get back to you. Okay. okay. And Peter and Bill are our, our technical experts. Okay. John and I just... <coughs> we listen. We, <laughs> we make sure that there's some core. <laughs> well, we thank the taxpayers yeah. as well for the support they've given us at this point. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you much. Thank you. <laughs> Town managers report cable franchise agreements. So we met the uh, the profile cable consortium met uh, was that two weeks ago and uh, the Monday of uh, last week and we uh, also spoke with legal counsel and uh, the group voted to proceed to move forward with a one year extension of the current franchise agreement with. Charter and uh, to engage the services of, uh, of a legal consultant to help us with the negotiation efforts and um, basically batted around the idea of you know three months, six months, or one year. And it was decided in the best interest of uh, the, the consortium to do a one year while renegotiating uh, a longer term mm -hmm. contract with Charter Communications. I'm glad to see you, Chairman. Okay. Hmm? Glad to see your chairman. Oh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> yeah. Is that why I didn't have nothing else to do? <laughs> I have a, a question here. Uh, oh, you're looking for a motion to approve yes. the amendment of science? I have a question. Uh, on the cover page, uh, last sentence in this long paragraph, no expenditure will be allowed to exceed uh, the current year's revenue and deferred revenue. Uh, the, the town of Littleton will assume no responsibility to pay any expenditure for the Profile Cable Television Consortium beyond what the town of Littleton has received in funding. Has that ever happened? Has there ever been a, an over-expenditure or a request for an over-expenditure? Sorry, you mean you're talking about the money that was taken under the franchise? No, I'm just asking if... if um, there was ever a situation where more than the forty-nine ninety-nine was needed, and no, no, how was it? Yeah, but, but since the uh, since the franchise expired, we figured that we should be uh, requesting a fairly large sum of money from Time Warner right. to do some upgrades in right. our system, our channel two, and also utilize the franchise fee, which goes into the general fund. For part of this purpose too, we were looking. I was looking at around a hundred thousand dollars from Time Warner, and then I was figuring on using the, 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 the money that was brought in from the franchise. I don't want to change it particularly, but, but use that money for a purpose to do with Channel Two, right. the cable, the, the cable system itself. I understand. But that's something that the, uh, the uh, consortium will have to take up. We do have the money in, in the town's account which is under the consortium's name, it's under my name, but right. it's, it's going to be used, I guess, to start with to to extend this franchise agreement right. for the year, and then we'll work on it, we're going to have a meeting every month, and then we'll start working on some definite plans. So what you're saying is that you've never experienced a situation where there was an over-expenditure that you had to face? No. Okay. Good. Thank you. 
Uh, motion to approve this one year extension. So, uh, second the motion. All those in favor indicate in the affirmative. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next item is uh, approving George Sansui to work with the town attorney regarding the Northern Pass project and improve and revitalize downtown. Is that still worded that way? Personnel policy change? Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped in. Oh, you're jumping. Yeah. I, I jumped in. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Changes to section 8.1a of the personnel policy for non-union insurance. So what this does, and uh, Karen can speak to it, but annually uh, the, the town or the select board has been uh, asked to uh, consider waiving a certain section of the personnel policy to allow uh, us to reduce our liabilities on our books for um, for earned time. And so what we're requesting is that um, the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm skipping, skipping one too. So, I'm sorry, section 8.1. This is, uh, well, this, these changes are to change the personnel policy to allow us uh, to make changes within the health insurance portion of right. the policy annually if needed and without having to come back to the board each time. It makes it uh, more general references to health insurance rather than specifying certain plans. Right. I have a question regarding wording in the middle paragraph, last sentence. Positions that may qualify for this benefit must be approved by the town manager prior to hiring and being offering. <coughs> excuse me. And being offering. Should be driver. offered. I'm sorry? Should be offered. Okay. All right, so it's just a tense issue. Got it. All right, we'll make that change. So you're looking for a, a motion to approve this? Yes. So second. All those in favor indicate in the affirmative. All right, thank you. Okay, now we're into the leave time, I believe. Right? Yes, leave okay. time reduction. So this would basically weigh section 8.1's restrictions and also uh, allow the payout to be at 100 percent for the month of October or November and December. Right. Same thing we did last year. Correct? Mm -hmm. Same thing we did last year. Yeah. Yeah. Motion. So Second. All those in favor indicate in the affirmative. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, we're into other business. <laughs> Appoint Bill Freeland to the Library Board of Trustees to replace Ms. Linda Lebrecht. Term expires 2017. So Mr. Freeland is here. So welcome. <laughs> We've got a motion to approve. A second. All those in favor indicate in the affirmative. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Um, looking to approve George Satsui to work with the town attorney regarding the Northern Pass project and improve and revitalize the downtown area. George, Hickman? No. This is just a contract uh, to we have we have contracts with him for like, other utilities. Right. Uh, our attorney wants to be able to work with George for the Northern Pass project. So what role would George play in that particular? So uh, his they, they use his expertise, his expertise in testimony and um, in drafting responses to some of the requests from the Northern Pass uh, okay. attorneys back then. And improving and revitalizing the downtown. I'm not sure why that's there. So primarily to work with Northern Pass based on his expertise. That's right. Okay. Do we have a motion? So Second, all those in favor indicating the affirmative. Aye. Aye. Thank you. The third one requests uh, for permission to use town history books regarding the history of the Littleton Police Department. I'm not sure that's something we should be approving. I went through the 17 or 18 things that select me do, and our major thing is um, well, the, the, the books, the town history books, has a has a statement that, that this cannot be used without the town's permission. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. And they're updating. So is the town permission town the selectman's position, or permission? I think so. Yeah. It doesn't fall under any category. It's just a minor item. I just wasn't sure why we needed to do this. But the amusement book had been 
taken material out of it and yeah. as, you know, notice that it had to be approved in the town. Okay. So I would move approval. And I second that all those in favor of indicate in the affirmative. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Spent some time searching for that. <laughs> Why do we have to do this? <laughs> so, okay. Um, Vacancy announcement M and is river local advisory committee, RLAC, a three-year term. Uh, is there someone here to speak to this? I don't believe we have anyone here. This is just an announcement that there is a vacancy and that we'll be noticing it and the board can uh, appoint. An RLAC member must reside in New Hampshire and may represent a broad range of interests, including local government, business, conservation interests, recreation, agriculture, and riparian landowners. Those are people that are adjacent to the river. Uh, each member serves for three years. I didn't even know there was such a thing. <coughs> Learned something new every day. Okay, so we have a vacancy here. We'd be looking for uh, people to perhaps want to be on the commission. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Old business, new business, health officer update. Uh, as some of you may know, I'm the health officer here in Littleton. I'm going to give you a six-month update. I have four sections here, uh, complaints, inspections, notifications, and what we call alerts. Uh, I'm going to go to notifications first, and then I'll come back. Um, one notification that we received was based on a request I made of the Water and Light Department when they were uh, proposing to go out this summer to do their, their uh, water tests. And that was to test the school buildings. Uh, as we know, in the last year, <coughs> nationally, we faced um, a serious issue in Flint, Michigan. And so I asked if, in fact, the school buildings could be tested. And I think you've tested in the past, but Tom Considine is here to explain the methodology a little bit. And George Brewer was good enough to show up representing the school district because what uh, we discovered was that, um, let me get it, it's in the folder into itself. Uh, they did the test on August 9th in all three buildings. Uh, the high school building passed, the Bronson building passed, and one of the tests that uh, Lake Lake passed and one failed in terms of the amount of uh, um, lead in the, in, the, in the water system. Uh, it was in a particular room. Uh, George uh, was notified right away, and they have fixed the problem for me to go right to the end of this thing. But let me tell you uh, what the report I got on August 18th said all samples passed with the exception of a sample taken at Lakeway Elementary that failed. The sample was collected in a sink that is thought to be originally plumbed when the school was built. From what we are being told, it is unknown when the water in the sink was last used. Um, which I am sure is why the sample failed. The other thing that Tom told me uh, earlier was that this is a worst, taste, uh, worst case test condition. The water had been sitting there since June when the school closed. The water was warm. All of that, sitting there for, for weeks, plus the, the warmness of the water, uh, added to the uh, What's, what's called here is a catalyst that aids the contaminant leaching process from older solder, uh, solder plumbing joints. <coughs> so um, that unit was ultimately pulled, and the uh, resampling was done in early September, I believe, and uh, the school uh, building passed. So, Tom, would you like to speak to this? And, George, would you like to speak to any part of this as well? Um, just pretty much summarize everything. It's a, it failed. It was a sink that had uh, anything prior to 1986. The plumbing had a, a certain content of lead in it. But under the under an aggressive water, which little it is a soft water, which is the pH about 6.8, it will leach out the uh, lead components, the lead particles, and that. Uh, you know, solder joints over time. It's nothing that happens overnight. It's, in this particular case, no one knows the last time this particular sink was done. And it was, the school was built 
and fix it someplace. So, right. And the object of fixing it basically is to run the lot. I mean, it doesn't resolve the issue of a, a, a pre-1986 solder, but it does minimize the uh, contaminant issue. Right. That's what happened there. We tested the kitchen on all the schools in the first half. And it was all spun out of control when, as you know, 2014 Clint Michigan changed a lot of sources from the Curon, so they went up to buy it to a local source. Right. In 2015, a child died, I think, of lead poisoning, or has lead poisoning, which caused national blew up. Then the state sent a letter to the schools in New Hampshire saying, be aware that you know, lead is a contaminant that especially affects the youth and the children. So we went on, had discussion, and we summarized everything, and then we tested it. We tested prior to that in 2015, the same, same location, plus some more of the water fountains, and they cleared as well. They replaced, a, I think, a fountain in the old junior high wing of the school, high school. But uh, that's it. In the town, we, the, we test every three years, all the residents, uh, randomly selected residents in town, um, based, we've been doing that since 19, the third, it's the 30th year of our testing. So it's our 10th round of testing. Mm -hmm. And then the system gets tested twice a year, every year. And we test residents, 20 to 30 residents, every third year. So and those all passed um, right. this past year. The deck in one house that was locked up and it was just sitting right. there. So, so it basically, was, it was a good experience. Oh well, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to know where you're at. I mean, right. but the, I mean, the moral of the story is that if you have a long-term break, you flush your sinks before you, in these older buildings and houses, flush your sinks before you uh, drink water. Right. It doesn't take long to, you know, lukewarm water, get it out of your pipes, and then to and get the cold water running. So, so. And George, reading this, this email, you, you moved on that rather quickly. Yes. I, I know you to be a quick person. I'm just <laughs> verifying that your reputation. Yep. What we've done is ask the custodians to, uh, well, the, none of the, this was in a music room, very rarely used for, that sink was very rarely used year-round. Some of these sinks in these rooms have a water bubbler in them, right. and uh, I'm probably dating myself when I use that term. But the, uh, so we want to make sure that when the kids drink out of them that the water is okay. So the custodians, when they go around cleaning the rooms, they run the water for, for a few minutes to make sure it's all flushed out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you both for coming tonight. Uh, what I would like to speak to as well, I'll go back to complaints. So since taking over as the health officer, it's been quite a learning experience. Um, there are two or three R RSAs that, I, that are health officers work on. Right the first one I'd like to just speak to quickly is called Hazardous and Dilapidated Buildings. It's RSA 155B. Since April, I've had seven complaints. Uh, one in the Carlton Street area, one in the Hagger Lane area, one on High Street. One on Meadow Street, one on Union Street, one on Mill Street that we're all aware of because the buildings have been torn down, um, and one on Pleasant Street. So when you're dealing with hazardous or dilapidated buildings, you're dealing with structural issues. And I have to say that um, my approach to this, because I know absolutely little about this, is to draw to me when I go out, if I have to, the police chief, the fire chief, and the zoning officer. And they have been part of many of these uh, visits that I've made uh, because sometimes it's not just the structural building itself but it's the internal components like the wiring or the, the piping and so uh, three of these are ongoing and four of these have been resolved but one simple one that I can actually identify for you if you come up Pleasant Street and you're coming up to the park area and you turn into the park you may remember seeing a a standalone garage had been sitting there for years. The center of the doors were falling off, um, the windows had been broken, and I went inside the garage looking for needles and looking for beer cans or looking for anything. It was relatively clean, 
people who own the property live in um, Rhode Island. So I sent them a letter, told them that this building was considered to be uh, dilapidated and basically uh, uh, abandoned. And if you go past it now, what they did is they put some money into it, they fixed it up, and they leased it to somebody who uh, is using it now. So it was a nice ending to, uh, to this story. Um, with RSA 147, which is called nuisances, which could be orders, toilets, and we all know what our, <laughs> those are, drains, exportations, which is seepage, and rubbish, I've had 13 complaints in the Far Hill Road area, Elm Street area, Badger Street area, Crane Street area, Pine Street area, Maple Street area, Pike Avenue area, South Street area, Washington Street area, Chiswick Avenue area, Union Street area, and Meadow Street area. Uh, this is primarily dumpsters that are open and collecting water or they're dumpsters where uh, the garbage has reached well above the top of the, the lids and sometimes the, the uh, uh, bags have fallen off, animals have opened them up. Uh, in the, uh, as many people know, in the, um, in the Union Street area we have bear problems down there and if you have dumpsters that are overfilled, um, you have uh, you know, bear problems, you have various kinds of animal problems. So I had 13 complaints, I've got two ongoing, and I've got 11 that have been resolved. And I'm, I'm really kind of happy about that because um, people have responded very positively to the requests. And in certain cases, these dumpsters are owned by out-of-town out um, management companies that are managing <coughs> uh, apartment buildings, etc. And they've been very good about resolving, uh, pulling these, these uh, dumpsters out. Um, during the summertime, this is a problem because of West Nile virus and uh, Eastern encephalitis uh, problems. We have not had any this year. One of the silver linings in this very dry summer has been a lack of mosquitoes. They test down state weekly, um, both in animals as well as in people. And um, they have not, they've only come up with one case of, um, I think, West Nile virus, and this was late in the season. Um, so it's standing water, either in people's yards, in containers, or in dumpsters, or garbage. Uh, in one case, uh, we had a tenant throwing garbage out of second floor window. These are the kind of things that uh, I've addressed since, since April. There were 13 of those, most of them have been resolved. In terms of inspections, I've, I've done five. One was a foster care request uh, of a family that was going to bring in uh, a foster child and I had to inspect the home. A school on Cottage Street, a counseling center that was opening up on Cottage Street. Uh, I had an industrial park request um, from a plumbing, for a plumbing inspection ver verification. And uh, Amanusic Street, we have a, a living condition situation that's uh, on hold right now. So that's basically that, plus, and if I can find the second sheet now, uh, I've had other notifications, and they're primarily, for instance, I can give you one that you're aware of, on Union Street when the uh, Sunoco, uh, the Exxon station closed, and then they pulled the tanks and shut the building down, they do a phase one environmental inspection. So I've had reports, I don't do those myself, but I've had five reports on, um, on those. And of course the one from the school and then there were a few others I had that are actually um, hazardous waste reports and in both cases on those, uh, they were closing those cases, they had uh, cleaned up those sites. <coughs> and that basically is what I have for this part of the report. The other part I want to uh, give you is um, a new item. We have a website component now to the town website, and I have to thank Seal for doing this. She spent 122 hours of overtime putting this together. <laughs> but anyway, there's a health officer component to the town website. My, my name and, oh, my email address too. <laughs> and, and the town phone number. <laughs> 
and the functions and the services uh, that we render, we have a complaint form that's in here. And I have some links. Uh, right now it's Eastern Equinine uh, Equine, I think, encephal ence Encephalitis, Lyme Disease Fact Sheet, and a West Nile <coughs> Fact Sheet. And slowly we'll be adding other linkages from the State uh, Department of Public Health uh, for people's uh, education. And that's that. There's two things that I, I want to talk about uh, just for a second uh, before I read you a letter. I can find it here. Um, the dumpster issue, both in terms of dumpsters that are that are overfilled and uh, dumpsters that are filling with water, and those are primarily the uh, construction dump dumpsters that they use in the summer when they're renovating the building um, or cleaning things out of the building. And um, I'm going to propose a regulation to the select the other two selectmen. Uh, apparently, selectmen can write regulations, and the regulation that I'm thinking of writing is to have all dumpsters covered during the summer when they're not in use, to prevent the, the standing water situation. Um, Zika's not up here yet, but Zika at some point, if we continue to warm, as I guess the projection is, uh, the East Coast is going to continue to warm up over the years, sooner or later that mosquito will be up here. It could be 10 years from now, it could be 15 years from now, but sooner or later uh, that could happen. So, but we still have West Nile and, we, and the Eastern equine um, viruses that we have to deal with. So I'm going to be asking, or I'm going to be writing um, a regulation for consideration by my colleagues to put in place for next summer. The second one, and I'm going to read this to you, I just received it. Um, this came from the athletic director at Littleton High School. I am submitting this letter as I am concerned about the amount of dog feces on our athletic fields in Littleton. I have observed people with dogs on fields at Runic Park, Athorpe Common, and Norton Pike. These people use these fields as they, for their animals as they can lock them in and allow them to run without a leash. The problem is that dog feces is left behind as people are not picking up after them. One could argue that even if they are carrying a bag and picking up this mess, uh, there is no way they will remove 100% of it. Our kids are playing with balls that are rolling through this mess. I observed our girls' soccer team picking up three piles of dog feces from Norton Pike Field on October 18th. Uh, earlier this summer, the Cal Ripken board, as well as the softball coaches, decided to put locks on the gates at both Runnick Park and Norton Pike in order to keep people off of the field as all the coaches were picking up dog feces before games and practices. Um, this is not only a health concern, but it keeps the innocent people from having the privilege to use these fields. And so, people that are using the athletic fields are concerned about the amount of dog feces so we're going to be looking into that in terms of, um, I'm not sure if this is a regulation or an ordinance that has to be developed. But obviously, uh, in one case, I was told that um, depending on the poundage of, poundage of the dog, the amount of droppings can be quite large. And so we're going to address that issue um, as summer or fall turns to winter now, so we'll be ready for next spring. So the regulation regarding um, dumpster covers, in fact, the construction company that was working on a Social Security building covered their dumpster at the end of the day. Uh, I don't know if it was with a waterproof or water repellent cover, but clearly, um, and it was a large construction type dumpster, so I think this is something that we can ask everybody to consider. And now this uh, canine. So that's, that's all I have. Any questions? Thank you. Um, moving on to the agenda, we are going to public comments. Do we have any public? Yes, read. Um, I would like to ask uh, the chairman of the selectman anything uh, that uh, you've been, you know, put to my attention that uh, we have a large discrepancy on uh, 
tax assessment. Mm -hmm. Now, I have been in touch with uh, a tax uh, director and uh, tax appraiser from Concord. Okay, I still don't have no answer, but uh, but I would like to ask you, the two gentlemen, which uh, you know very you know in a gentle way, you know the town manager explained to me, but I would like you to hear from uh, the chairman. Well, well, well this is this the discrepancy that uh, is applied in little time assessment, tax assessment. Mm -hmm. It's uh, so enormous between uh, one property and another property, which, you know, I mean, uh, a few of them I went to look at. Hey, it's a discrepancy. It's a discrepancy so big. And uh, according to the municipal laws, one of the paragraph says that the, the salesman, they can look into Today, if they see any large discrepancy between one property and the other one. Now, what I ask you, gentlemen, is uh, do you, what, what, what's your take about this subject and the discrepancy about, you know, some people who pay more taxes than other people that they have a better property and stuff like that. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I can only speak to the the one that occurred five years ago and then this one, because I wasn't on the board before that. Um, it's, it's not a science, it's an art, you know, it's partly an art form. You can get differences of opinions. I know five years ago there was a lot of anger. Remember when, when the uh, Partridge Lake properties were assessed at yes. just an astoundingly high rate, percentage went up. Uh, but even out at Partridge Lake, some properties didn't go up as much as others, and and, there, and when you talk to the assessors, uh, obviously it comes down to the perspective of the assessor who's out there in his mind's eye, given that he's being totally honest with himself and with us, but you do get these differences. Uh, there was a lot of complaints, I guess it was six years ago when we had the last one. This one... Um, we had two-thirds of the properties come down in value, about one-third went up in value, and a small number, and I, I, used to, I had to count at one point, uh, 40 or 50 properties stayed almost the same. And mine happened to be one of those this time that stayed almost the same. Now, went down in yours, Mr. Chairman. Right. You went down in yours, Mr. Chairman. I went down a small amount, but my, my, tax, rate, dollars. Yeah, my tax rate stayed the same. Um, but I was part of the down. The, a third of them went up, and some of them went up quite a bit. Yes. Some of them went down quite a bit. Um, I'm sorry I don't have that report because some of them went down astoundingly, and it was based on a resale or, you know, market conditions changed, whatever. But people were, were dropping anywhere from 25 down to 1%, and then, of course, there were some that were flat, and then a few went up. But there were very few complaints this time. So we were faced with um, having to look at how it went, to lack, for lack of a better term. The, the, the firm that we brought in this time seemed to have assessed it in such a way that most people didn't raise a question about it. Uh, that's all I can say to you, because uh, nothing happened because of it. Um, Six years ago, when we had the assessment, there was a lot of complaints, but I don't think uh, anything, I don't think it's like that at the you, time you, moved on. You can say nothing about a property, you know, it's like the tannery that six years ago was appraised over $550,000, okay? Now, with all the work that they did, with all the rates that they get, okay, that, that place looks like a mall. It's like a mall. You're going to be the city like a mall. At the property right now, he went down under seventy-five thousand dollars. Which place are you talking about? The tannery. the tannery. Oh, the tannery. I didn't hear it. Okay. Yeah. It's. Uh, I don't. I don't know. know. If yeah. somebody sees such a discrepancy, of course he's going to say something. But I take it. 
And I would, I would also just invite you if you had, you know, maybe your own specific list that you'd like us to take a look at and review. That if you the bring, list is wrong. Yeah, you know. yeah. Bring it on, in though, no, and no. Uh, we'll we'll try to work with you to. to no, it's all right. You know, his answer, you know, the yeah. the chairman's answer is a kind, you know. You know, it's interesting. Also, some people whose property values went down were happy because the tax rate went down. Other people were just totally upset. And sometimes it's kind of based on if they're getting ready to sell the property, they clearly don't want to see a large, a any kind of drop. So uh, the, few con the few concerns I had voiced, and they weren't complaints, they were just concerns, is that uh, I don't understand why my property went down in value. And it's one of the best houses in my metal street. It's one of the best that I've got with that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, Maybe yeah, because anyway, it, I don't it, know. It, <laughs> I guess my point is in in either direction and either going up or down, people okay. may be either satisfied or not satisfied. But to answer your question and your concern, and I I kind of share your concern sometimes when I look at, at my property or somebody else's. Um, but in the, but it's it's their methodology, and it seemed to be okay this time around. There were there were very few complaints. Some concerns. What is too much discrepancy, Chairman, is that the uh, majority of the property that they went down, quote unquote, they are people with the rank in town. It's like a chairman, like an attorney, like a, you know, CEO, something like that. It's that, that. That's what's the discrepancy. Of, which of, I don't yeah. accept. You know, it's, it's of, the, of the 3,700 parcels that we're looking at, <coughs> Two thirds went down, so a lot of a lot of people were affected okay. by that. I accept. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anything else, Eddie? Yeah, uh, I've been watching the the, the Bridge Street Bridge, uh, and I've noticed that there's been a fence put up on both the south side and the north side to protect people from not walking off into the river, which is good. And I, but I noticed it's still blocked off from being walking across it even. Uh, at least I think it is, and it looks like it is. And I, would, I guess my question is, is why is it open to the public? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so we're just, we'll have a, a, a letter of substantial completion, and there's just some um, steps we have to go through with the engineer and the contractor, and then uh, to transfer a, the site to the town, and we'll have it open. Very soon. Uh, is there any kind of a timetable? Um, I've, I've just uh, sent a request out earlier, um, I think it was earlier on Friday, to find out what's our expected date. We were also hoping to get lighting in. It was one of the bid alternates on the project uh, that we weren't able to do. And uh, we were trying to explore alternative ways to make that happen. But I don't think that's going to happen before we open the bridge. So. Sometime soon. I would say within next couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. Well, while we're on there, what about the plaque for um, the Ken Curran plaque? And, and I don't know. The the yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, I think it's down at the highway department, but I don't know that. I think they're both down there, and I yeah. think that he has a yeah. granite post. Yeah, I believe the uh, uh, not plaques. Not installed yet, yeah, but they can right. be put in before. And, uh, yeah, the plaques, that both the actual plaques both had come in, I think, about two weeks ago, and we were right waiting on granite posts. Um, I'll have to check with Joe to see if those have arrived. We were also looking at um, to ensure our control over either, either side of the bridge because they're uh, done through. Right to you, or right Yeah, access. right. Yeah, and I believe one of the property owners on the, other side of the bridge. on the other side of the bridge was raising some questions, and so we just wanted to make sure that we had everything in accordance with what was on the record. Well, in other words, that will involve Yes. Okay. Before the ground freezes, we go. I know, it's going to freeze. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, okay well, thank you. Uh, Any, yes, sir. <coughs> well, I'd just like to add to the uh, your uh, health officer's report on the, and kind of caveat with top of the uh, um, help, help the athletic director's comments. You know, we fight the issues with dog feces and other things at our sites <coughs> continually. Okay. I mean, that's why we ended up, unfortunately, putting bars and gates up because, and garbage, we'll keep people away because we'll find garbage bags full of cat litter, dog feces, just beside our water tanks, beside the tank on 
Skull Street, and we continually fight that. So, I mean, a good side away from our kids playing and the Pablo Water Source would be an, a good spot for a uh, dog park if that's where we're headed to this. Yeah, well, <coughs> so what you're really, I mean, what you're also saying is that this is not just on the athletic fields, this is an Italian wide issue that we Well, it, it, affect, it affects me, us, because of the drinking water standards. Sure. You know, yeah. we have a, we get inspected by the state every three years, and they come and they actually check every site that we have an open connection to the water system, and the pump house is an open connection. Yeah. And so part of our ranking as far as our pump water permit is sanitary conditions. Unfortunately, dog feces near bottom of water is not a good yeah. mix. By the way, I just wanted to thank you. When I took this job as health, health officer, <coughs> I called Tom and he took me on a half a day tour of all of the of our water sources and the, and the facilities that the Tut Water and Life Department going to have set up to make sure our water is, is as clean as it can be when it, when it gets to us. Um, and so I uh, thank you for doing that. The water levels are levels are a lot lower than where we were there that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyone else have anything they'd like to say under public comments? Hearing none, we will go to a uh, approval of a set of minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll approve the September 26th minute that is written. Uh, so the second of that, all those in favor of indicating the affirmative? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, that's it in terms of the open, our open agenda. We are going to be going into non-public under... Thank you. Under RSA 91A32A, the dismissal promotion or compensation of any public employee. We will then come out and go back in under, um, I think, uh, for the second one. We'll take a short break.